Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to get a value from a subform in Microsoft Access. Today's question comes from Andrew in Rochester, New York, one of my gold members. Andrew says, is there a way that I can sum up a value based on a field in a subform and display that on the parent form instead of using the subform footer? Well, yes, Andrew, that is certainly possible. There are a couple of different ways you can do it. I'm going to show you a few different methods. For everyone else, here's what Andrew's talking about. If you go to my order entry form, okay, you'll see here's the extended price, which is the quantity times the unit price for each line. Then I sum all of these up and get the order total down here. Now, this is technically the subforms footer, and it's in the subform itself. If you go to design view, you'll see that that's in the footer of the subform. What Andrew wants to do is put it out here on the parent form. And there's a few different reasons why you might want to do this. It does make it easier for other forms to get a hold of it. But let me show you a couple of different techniques of how to get that value. But first up, a couple of prerequisites. First of all, if you haven't watched my invoicing video, go watch this first. It explains how I built that order entry form. And also, go watch this value from an open form video. This teaches you how to get a value from another open form. And this is the notation right here, forms, exclamation point, or bang, it's called in Access. Forms, bang, form name, so order form, for example, bang, and then the field name. And down here, I do put the subform syntax. It's a little more complicated, and this is what we're going to talk about in this video. So go watch both of those videos if you haven't already. They're absolutely free. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. I'll put links down below that you can click on to go watch them. Now, this is my Tech Help free template. This is a free download. If you want to get yourself a copy, you'll find a link on that invoicing page. Okay, now, in the order form, if I want to get a hold of this value and put it out here on the parent form, let's go to Design View. And I am going to, let me just copy this guy. So let's click on that. Notice what I just did there. Click once and you'll get the subform control. Click a second time to get the objects in there. Copy that. Now I'm going to click out down here and paste it. And yeah, it comes up here. That's fine. Move it down here. Now what's in there? It's sum of extended price. That's the control source. Let's see what happens right now if I just do that. Let's save this, close it, and open it back up again. I get a pound error. And why is that? Well, this is trying to sum up a field called extended price. And there is no field called extended price out here on the parent form. So what I want to do is tell this text box to get its value from this text box right there. All right, how do I reference that? Well, let me come up here. And I'm going to change this guy here to order total. And I'm going to delete that control source. I'll shift F2 to zoom in for you. Okay. All right, so how do we refer to a value on the subform? Well, first it's the subform's name, order, detail, f, dot, form. We're looking for the form property or the form collection in order, detail, f, and then what field you want. Bang, sum, extended, price. Okay, I'll hit OK there. Right, this control is called order, detail, f. All right, so it's order detail F, then go inside of that guy, go into its form collection, and get that field. And that is how you refer to it. Okay, now looking at the field, I can already see there's a warning message popping up here. It says this control has an invalid control source. What does that mean? No such field in the field list. Hmm, okay, order detail F, check that. Let's make sure we just check that. Let's see. Yeah, that's definitely order detail F. And then dot form, exclamation point, sum extended price. Let's check that and make sure. Yeah, that's the name of it, sum extended price. What's wrong? Why can't it find that? Well, this is a common mistake that lots of people make. You have to remember, if you're referring to another field, that's got to start off with an equal sign. Okay, and I left that in the video because I do it all the time still, and lots of people email me trying to say, why isn't this working? you got to have that equal sign. Now that goes away, okay, save it, let's close it, and open it back up again, and there you go. 
Now, this will work fine as long as you have this calculation in the subform in here. Okay, and if you don't want to see both of them, that's okay. You could just hide this guy. Like I had these guys over here, right? Order ID and order detail ID. We don't need to see them, so I just I hid them. All right, I did that in the other video. I make them invisible, and now I change the color to red, so in design view I can see that those are hidden fields. So you could do the same thing with this guy if you wanted to, or another option is you could get rid of this guy completely and try to do the sum out here by itself. So let's try that. Let's do the sum function out here. So let's go back to the control source, zoom in. All right, let's try to sum that guy. All right, sum up all of this field on this form. Hit OK. Let's save it, close it, open it back up again. And no, that's not going to work. That's not going to work because this guy has no idea what that field is. It has to add them all up, and it, it just doesn't have enough information. So that's not going to work. That only works with fields on the current form that you're on. You can't do that with a subform. But you could use one of the domain aggregate functions like dsum. dsum lets you look up values from another table or query. All right, if you don't know what dsum is, go watch this video. dsum is a cousin of dlookup that lets you look up a value in another table or query based on some criteria. Again, I'll put a link to this down below. So how would we use dsum here? Well, let's go into here. All right, I'm just going to get rid of this. Equals dsum. Now, what field are you summing up? I'm summing up the extended price field. Let's take a look and make sure. All right, extended price. Okay. From what table or query is it in? Well, you'd think it's in the order detail T, but you'd be wrong. It's actually in the order detail Q because we made a query for that. Okay, so be careful. In fact, let me, uh, I'm going to cut this and just show you here. Look here for the control source of that subform. It's order detail Q. Okay, order detail Q. So you got to make sure you match that. It's got to be, the field has to be in there because this field is not in the table. It's calculated based on these two guys. Okay, so back in here again. All right, so get the extended price from order detail Q. What's the criteria? Where the order ID equals the current order ID, just like that. And just in case there are none, if there are no records, we don't want an error showing, so we're going to put that inside of NZ. That's the null to zero function. If this returns no results, it comes back with a zero. There's also a video on my website for the NZ function. Very popular. Go watch that. I think it's mentioned in the DSUM video, too. All right. Hit OK. Save it. Close it. Open it back up again. And there you can see it's working. We don't have to sum up this field because this guy's going straight out to the table or query and getting the data. Okay. So that's another option. Personally, I like the first option. I like summing the records up here, uh, the, the value up here. I can't talk today. <laughs> <laughs> I like summing up the value here in the subform, and if you don't want to see it here, just hide it, and then use this guy to read that one. All right, I, I, t I don't know. I, I've been trying to avoid dlookup and dsum functions lately. <laughs> they slow things down a lot. All right, one more thing. If you want to get this guy from a different form completely, let's say you want to put it over here on the main menu. You want to read this value. Okay. Let's go to design view. Let's just use this guy here. Uh, current order total. All right, slide you down here. All right, let's make this not a date. Delete that. We'll make this a currency. Okay, now how do I refer to this field on this form? All right, what am I looking at? I'm looking at forms, order F, and then what's the name of the field down here? I think it's order total. Yep, okay, so this should be easy to look up. Okay, right here equals forms, order F, order total. Okay, let's close this, close this. Now, it's not going to work when this opens up because it can't find it. But once we go and have that order form open, okay, now I can close the main menu and reopen it, and there it gets the value. Okay, now what if this is in the subform? How do we read it then? Well, let's put it back. Let's put this guy back in here. 
I'm just going to cut this out and paste it in here. And then we got to change it back to what it was before, which is equals the sum of extended price. That's an easy one. Okay, let's make sure it's working. All right, it's working. It's in the sub form now. So now how do I refer to that from the main menu? Well, design view, open it up, go in here, equals forms, exclamation point. Now look at this. See this IntelliSense, right? Uh, this, this spoils you guys because when I was growing up, when I was learning access, we didn't have this. And I wanted to show it to you first with the Zoom so you could see it better, but you don't get the IntelliSense in the Zoom window. I wish they'd add that, but they don't have that. All right, this makes it easier for you to figure out where you're going. It's going to be forms, order, F, and then the subform, order, detail, F, there it is, dot, form, exclamation point, order, total. Do that, and I'll come up here and shift in so you can see it. There it is. And again, in this instance, since we don't use spaces in our form names or our field names. We don't need these brackets around these things, but Access adds them for us anyways. All right, let's save it, close it, open this back up again, and there it goes. It reads that value out of the subform. Okay. Okay, one more trick I want to show you, and that's how does the subform get a value from its parent? Well, that's, this is a neat trick too. Let's move this over here. Let's say hypothetically, for some reason, you wanted to get the description down here in the subform. Okay, I'll just drop a text box down here. Chop off that label. Okay, now right here, now there's two ways you can do it. You can use the form's full name in the control source. You could say equals forms, order F, description, like that. Hit okay, close it, save it. Open it back up again, and you can see it's working. Okay, and that's fine. That's that's super dandy. Yes, I said dandy. But if you want to reuse this subform on a couple of different forms, and I sometimes do, you want to make it so that this guy pulls off of whatever its parent form is without having to specify order F. And you can do that by saying, instead of forms order F, you just say parent. Give me parent bang description. And then whatever the parent form is, it's going to go up one level and find it. Save that, close it, open it, and there you go. All right, and any changes up here will reflect down there, but not until you leave that record and come back to it. All right, if you want that to refresh, you got to use something like an after update event. I'll put a link to that down below in the link section. That requires a little teeny tiny bit of VBA programming, but it's not hard. You just say in the after update event for this guy, requery this subform. If you want to learn more about this cool subform stuff with the naming conventions and all that, uh, I cover a lot more in Access Expert Level 2. We talk a lot more about that, that form field name notation. And also, I do a lot more with subforms in Access Developer Level 7. Lots of cool stuff in these lessons. And in the full courses, I take the time and I go over stuff in the order you should learn it, so you're not jumping around between all these different videos. Fast tips, I kind of got to do that because these are supposed to be fast tips. But in the course, I take my time. This one is, what, hour and 12 minutes. Okay? So there you go, Andrew. There is your fast tip for today. I hope this helps you out. And if you have any questions, post them down below in the comments section. And I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, 
one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my Tech Help videos, plus my Code Vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any Tech Help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for Tech Help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are gonna keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.